Hey gang, Diana Trout here today for Stencil Girls. So I'm going to do some stenciling and I'm going to do some messing around with color burst pigments and mixing them into different stuff. So let's get moving. I'm still in the in my studio recording because it's still too darn hot to um, be in the recording studio. So, but let me show. You. So, if there's background noise and wind, that's what that's what you're hearing. You're hearing air conditioning. So, I'm not sure which of these I'm going to use yet. I'm going to sort of let the uh, wind in the studio blow and see where I'm going. But I did want to show you all because these are so fabulous. Um, this is a ton of words on this one. And yes, I've made mistakes just popped out at me. So maybe um, there are more words here. I sort of really love this striped one. I mean, just think of that you could do it you could spray, shift, spray, shift, spray, and just keep, I wonder what that would look like. Maybe we'll try later. Um, and then these are really pretty too. I can t totally, I think these would be fantastic. I would probably mask them off and use them individually, but there's a ton of stuff here. There's one, two, three, four borders. Oh wait, five borders. And then there's these spaces too, six little patches, little squares. So this is pretty nice. And I love this one as well. It's so swirly. It feels Zen doodle-ish. So um, let's get started. I'm going to be using some texture paste, some gesso, color bursts. These are Ken Oliver's Color Burst. They're pigment powders. I have another video on them. So I'm going to start with, um, I have a piece of Stonehenge paper here. It's just like a heavyweight, uh, it's actually printmaking paper, but it's um, rather nice. I'm just kind of securing it down to my surface here with a little Tombow Mono Multi Adhesive. And I'm going to start with this smaller background um, stencil. So what I'm going to do here is, and you know what, I'm just going to grab a little more paint. I just want to not be, um, I don't want this to be shifting because it'll just make my job harder. Not that it's a hard job. I don't want to imply that this is a hard job. Okay, so I'm going to start with some gesso, and I'm working on one of these Rangers, um, I forget what it's called, it'll, it'll be down there in the, you know. So I just put out a little bit of gesso right onto my craft mat. I love working on this craft mat because everything just cleans up so easy, a little bit more maybe. All right. Now for the fun. I'm starting with the lightest color. I just um, sort of poofed. Can you see that? It, since it, I do have the fan and the air conditioner on in here, it's poofing quite a bit. This is pretty highly pigmented stuff. It is pigment. It is not dye based. It is pigment based. Just going to pick up some of this gesso on my knife. Where's that green coming from? This is really a pretty clean. The I have noticed when working with the, probably it's coming off of my knife, but that's fine. As usual, you never know. I'm not the neatest of um, artists and sometimes I get a surprise which you know frankly of course is just fine with me especially in a in especially in this kind of a thing that was not enough so I'm going to add some more I don't actually I guess I don't need to you know what just for fun I'm going to add some green too because I can't leave things alone. And I think probably what I'll wind up doing is using these sort of analogous colors. 
I'm going to put this on nice and sloppy. Now I'm sort of just troweling it on here and working it into these words. Cool beans. Looking good. I'm going to throw this right into some water. I don't know if you can tell, but this color burst actually dried very true, if not a tiny bit darker than the color I made, which is pretty unusual. So at this point, I this think it looks pretty cool. And um, I decided to put a little gesso on it just to push that background back a little. I really thought that the color burst would dry um, lighter, and they didn't. So I'm just adding some gesso to push that background back. So now I've got the other stencil that I'm going to use on top. I've, I've gone ahead with my heat gun and dried the gesso. Everything is dry and I'm just working again. I'm masking off that little pods area and um, just using some tape to do that and at the same time adhering lightly the stencil to the paper. I, it really does help to keep it from shifting and of course I thought ah, I put it down in a place other than where I wanted to. <laughs> this is about where things started to go a bit awry. <laughs> so I um, changed the position of the stencil and now I'm grabbing the texture paste. It's a Ranger product. Uh, there's lots of different grounds that can be used uh, instead of this particular just, uh, texture paste. I, I believe Golden has a watercolor ground. They all behave a bit differently, but uh, they all change the surface of your paper, and, and that's what I'm doing here. Now, uh, sorry it's off screen a little bit. My puddle on the I'll get it back on screen in just a minute. Um, I move it back into into screen for you. You can see how thick it is. It's almost like grout or um, I don't know what else, uh, but something like that. Now I'm just getting uh, uh, the blue color burst and just squirting a little blue in there. And this is uh, sort of where this went wrong. Uh, for me because I put too, it get that it's too dark. The color should have been a bit lighter, less pigmented. But that's okay. Um, as you can, as you'll see, it, this is not the end of the world. And to just work with it. So I'm just mixing it up there. I like to leave things a little streaky when I'm mixing colors, whether it's color into a paste as I'm doing here or red and yellow to make orange. I like to mix things and leave them a little streaky. It just adds a little interest to the color. So you just see me here troweling on uh, carefully putting the texture paste on top of the stencil and then working it into the open areas of the stencil with that palette knife. I'm sort of being gentle because I don't want to get under the stencil and then I'll scrape gently across the top to remove any extra texture paste. Okay, now I have the big word stencil that I showed you earlier, and I have uh, the word fearless masked out, just masked around it, and I'm using something called Radiant Shimmer Mist. Um, I've never used it before, but it was a nice deep value, and uh, I thought, okay, let me try it. I have a feeling it's going to give me mud when, I, when it gets on top of that yellow because it is purple. But, you know what, who cares, let's see what happens, and I'm just playing around anyway. 
So taping it down again just to avoid too much overspray. Uh, you know, it, it's a choice. It's a choice. You can either tape it down and avoid overspray or you can not tape it down. That's, uh, it's, as long as whatever you're doing, I like to say it should have, you should have some intent. Um, accidents happen, but uh, here I'm just showing that I have an intention. <laughs> uh, not real as successful, but I, the intention is that the fearless is all that I want in the radiant spray, that shimmer spray, which is actually pretty cool, by the way. It's a, um, oh, darn it, I can't think of the name of the company. I'll put it below. If you click on see more, I'll have all these links for you. And now I'm using my famous TP roll to uh, clean that up. And there it is. You can see it says fearless. So now I'm just moving things around a little bit. I was surprised to see that even though the Color Burst powder was sort of buried in texture paste or gesso, that it was still moving a little bit. I, I have to do some more testing with that, and I'll get back to you on it. Um, I assumed that since it was in a non-rewettable matrix that the texture paste, uh, that the color burst would not be movable, but it might have just been not quite dry enough. So I'm just pushing things around a little bit, and I'm beginning to say, you know what, this is a hot mess. But So I uh, decided not to leave things alone, but uh, to add some more materials. Sometimes that's the way I approach something that's not going as planned. I'll just keep going with it, see what happens. And actually, I think that looks pretty cool. I'm beginning to feel like this all looks pretty cool. Uh, I think that I probably could have stopped here, added, I would have done something like add bright red painting dripping down and and gesso but that says that could have been a solution gesso it could have been a solution collage and gesso it could have been a solution I mean you get to a point with a piece and it's not going as expected but it presents other opportunities. So, um, you know, it's totally up to you where you want to take a piece. Just keep playing was my feeling today. So here I have uh, applied another uh, kind of idea that I like to do when something's not going as expected, and I cropped this piece of paper. I cut off the edges that were very light and I just left the really concentrated areas um, to go and I and I think that that sort of gives it a little more punch. So now I cut down even further. I cut chunks out of it and I'm thinking this would be a, a great piece for my uh, the journal that I use to write a lot and um, I'm really really liking the word wisdom in there and down at the bottom um, under my thumb is mistake I just pointed out mistake and uh, so I think that would be great prompts for a journal page I'm just sort of looking around, seeing where it would look good. So now I've got one of those funny little birds of Tim Holtz stamped out on a piece of white cardstock, and I'm like, this make a cool card. My nephew just finished his master's. It'd be a great congrats card for him. And um, so, yeah, that's going to work for me. So I'll show you some pictures of this. Don't forget to stop by my blog and the Stencil Girl blog. 
give me a thumbs up if you would. That helps uh, helps my channel out a lot. And uh, check uh, out the click more button down below. And I'll see you soon.